getting excited. The sun is finally out. Going on a camping trip for two nights. It's supposed to rain and snow tomorrow. I've never been to this spot before. It's 4,200 foot elevation and I'm super excited. Not getting any younger. So shoot, let's do this. Enjoy the time. Hope you enjoy the video. How do you usually open your bacon? You open it on the top side with the flap or on the bottom side? So I alluded to this earlier. It's been about two weeks since I've had my surgery. This is the scar. It's about a 10, 12 inch scar. Actually, some of the tape finally came off and it's healing pretty well. But I feel like I've kind of gotten to that point in life where I just, just don't care anymore about certain things like 2016, I had the first surgery on my hip. 2018, I fully ruptured my Achilles tendon. Just had this surgery. I used to play basketball all the time and I just haven't been living the life that I've wanted to for the longest time. And after the Achilles tear, I've been fearing going to play ba basketball again, which I absolutely love. That was my first love. And I've just gotten to the point where I just don't care about being careful anymore when it comes to certain things. Like life is too short. And before I get 50, 60 where I can't do these things, I'm gonna risk getting injured again to be able to do what I love. That's about all I gotta say about that. Now you know where I stand. Now you know what we're doing. We're on a camping trip for two days. I'm gonna set up my, my camp here because it is supposed to be snowing tonight. Never camped out in the snow. It's gonna be nice just to have everything set up here for when I come back to sleep later. Starting out with a fly rod, but I've also got my spinning rod just in case this doesn't work. Dang, I think what I thought was about to happen might happen, which is gonna rain. I saw a couple drops and looked like a couple snowflakes. But here's the rig before we start. Got an extra long leader, I don't know why, it's just what I'm doing. No rhyme or reason to this. Little zebra midge, of course, to a split shot about two feet up. And then three and a half feet from that is this little sticker indicator. So I'm gonna go cast right over there into the pool. Wish me luck. Every once in a while, a good idea to check your line and make sure that there's no leaves and no seaweed, anything like that, dragging. Ah, I don't know, kind of tough here. But I gotta say, casting, after casting from the surf, it's so easy to cast this little tiny midge compared to the eight weight sinking line. This floating line is, feels like I'm a pro. Maybe just two or three casts more with this fly rod because the snow is starting to come down. So I'm pretty much Euro nymphing at this point, which means I'm casting out and I'm not letting any of the fly lines stay in the water. I'm just straight to the indicator, which technically I wouldn't even need an indicator right now. So if there is any bite, I would feel it straight away right from the rod. Little tiny fluger rod, four pound test. We'll get this out here before the snow starts. But snow is actually really nice compared to rain in this situation. I don't want to get all wet. I'd rather get all snowy and have the snow just bounce off of me. This is exactly where I was fishing, throwing that nice spinner. And the water is so clear, but I don't see a single fish. Big, small, sucker fish, minnow, nothing at all. Well, most spots are closed and this is one of the only spots that's open. So I think we're gonna have to do some more scouting. Getting colder by the second. A little snow coming down from the trees, coming into this abandoned campground. <laughs> Feels like I'm about to meet Sasquatch out here. But I'm gonna see if this road leads down to the river. 
try to catch something for dinner. See the riffles over there? That's what I'm trying to hit, but I'm gonna hit it with the fly rod. And before I do, I wanna do a little investigating and see, just see if I can find any bugs. See if I can match the hatch. I gotta remember I'm not in waders. I almost forgot, I almost stepped right in here. All right, what do we have here? A lot of these, but that looks like caddis, or is that just from a tree? All right, this will give me a. This will give me a. This is a clue. This will give me a little advantage. You see that? That's a caddis, and it's enclosed in a cocoon that it made by itself. There's another one. He kind of looks like an ant. Let's wait till he comes out of his shell again. There he is. So we're gonna throw on something that kind of looks like that. Dark, black, maybe an ant pattern. Let's see what we got. Well, this is our selection of flies and looking at what I have, I'm thinking these guys right there imitate the caddis pretty closely what do you think is that the one you would throw kind of small black color Man, it's kind of difficult working with these tiny tiny flies trying to tie line when it's so cold it's about freezing temperatures right now that's what i got tied on top and right on the hook i've got another line and that's that's going to the go-to just going to the midge so we got two things going at once for us Let's give it a shot here. All right, we're getting down there now. I've, I've got a lot more confidence now. Let's do it right in the seam too. This looks good. It's got potential. It's getting down to the strike zone, I think. Just waiting for that bite. Going right down the middle. We'll just go straight down the center and it'll find its own seam. A lot of you might be asking yourself how I'm fishing in a river in California when it's not April yet because most rivers open from like April till November or something like that. I took out the 2002 freshwater guide and it has every single lake and river listed in that guide and I just went down the list which ones are open. So it really only left me with about five to ten choices and then all I had to do was find a place that was kind of close to me and not too far and also a place that wasn't getting snowed in. So that's really just how you got to do it if you want to try to find these camping spots where you can fish, literally take out the freshwater guide and go down it list by list. You know how I said there's only five or ten rivers that are open right now? Well, this is one of the rare ones and another bad thing about this river is that it's only open for a stretch of seven miles. So there's only so many places I can fish and I think I might have to change up the plan. This is my last spot, and then drastic times call for, no, is it? That's not what it is. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Now, I just got a call from the ocean. The ocean is calling me. I'm coming from the mountains, I'm going back to the ocean. Only problem is, I'm not prepared for the ocean. We're gonna have to stop. It's We need to buy a fishing rod now. I'm looking mainly for a rod and reel combo. Berkeley Fusion, $37. As long as the reel works, let's check if the reel works. Okay, it clicks open. Uh, I can use this. It's got line, it's got a reverse. Somebody going fishing. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Well, sun is almost down. It pretty much is down. I still got a few hours to drive. Sleep in the car tonight. Be at it bright and early tomorrow. It's a question, Eddie. I mean, what happened is, um, once. Oh, this is how I slept last night. Pretty much in a blanket taco with a layer of blanket underneath.
and one on top helps so much to keep you warm if you have something underneath you now it's time to go to the next fishing spot <laughs> So this is why I did not want to come out to the ocean this week. It's just so rough. It's probably blowing about 15 miles per hour right now. There's white caps out as far as I can see. And the swell is big. It's a seven foot swell today. And there's no bait and I have no bait. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go try to find some mussels somewhere that's accessible. And then this little cove is protected because we got the wind coming from the north we got the swell coming from the north, so I got this little cove over here to kind of protect, protect the water. And it looks like it's calm, it's really murky, but that doesn't really matter. So we got to find some bait first, and then we can catch some fish and cook up some breakfast. I am determined to catch fish on this trip. Well, here's a spot, but this is a little too sketchy. Out there on that rock, which means I'll have to climb through this little hole, and all these rocks are really slippery. So I got to keep searching, go to another cove. Yeah, I would not want to fall into that. Well, I do see some mussels down here, but I just can't tell what size they are. They do look a little bit small, but I bet you I could find three or four big ones and that's all I need. And remember, when you're taking mussels, you don't want to take them with a tool. It's only legal to take them by hand. So you got to grab them and twist them off. And looks like there's several over here. I just gotta watch out for these waves coming in. There's our mussels. Not too big, not too small, but the lips on these will be good enough to thread onto a hook. Each mussel has two of those lips. So we've got six of them. If we only put one hook on our line, we can use 12 casts. 12 casts, I think we can catch one fish. Here we go with the Berkeley Fusion Rod. And it turns out this has 17 pound test, not 20. Now last night I found out that one of the eyes is missing. It's missing the guide. See that right there? That's how it should look. A little bit thicker, but I guess somebody popped this one out. So I bought a pack of weights yesterday. I think there's about eight of them in there. And how I'm gonna attach the weight, I don't have any swivels, so I'm gonna tie a surgeon's loop. And I'm just gonna make a big loop like that. I'm gonna wrap this around itself two times just like a knot one and two and I'm leaving the loop big enough where I can put multiple weights on there and I'll thread them through and I'll cut this tag end off check my drag super loose let's tighten that up now we're gonna get a little technical for a second if we're targeting rockfish we could only use one rod and two hooks but we're targeting perch and in this case, we can basically use as many rods as we want and as many hooks as we want. But in order to conserve my tackle, I'm only going to use one hook per cast. If I did want to use three hooks, for instance, I could. But if I did catch rockfish, I would have to let it go because I was targeting perch and I caught a rockfish using an illegal method. So many little technicalities, but you got to be on top of it if you come out here. So I'm going to put a couple weights on and now I can determine where do I want this hook? Do I want it right there near the bottom? Probably not because that's where the rockfish is going to be. I want a perch so I'm going to put this hook way up here about three and a half feet and it's going to dangle up there like that. Now I'm going to tie a dropper loop. I'll just do this really fast. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you got to practice. All right, so one around my hand, three fingers, one, two, three and four pull the line back through and now we'll pull both sides tight keep ev keeping everything in line give it a little spit tie it tight and it won't tension down okay so that's our dropper loop right there that's what we just tied now we've got two types of hooks I've spent about six dollars on tackle we've got these hooks that come just by themselves this was like a dollar thirty for ten of them this was like 80 cents for
for six of them. Actually, no, there's eight in here. That's nice. Yeah, there's eight. And it comes with a leader. And this will give it a little more action and it'll actually cover more ground, a lot more ground than just putting this hook straight on the dropper loop. Straight on and back over. And that's our weight right there. Now we need our bait. That's one of the lips right there. It's uh, not too big. There's a lot more in this muscle, but the lips, those are the toughest parts. That's what we're working with. Let's see if we can catch anything. The wind's picking up fast, man. All right, y'all, my drag is set tight. I'm gonna make sure we're on hard rocks and nothing's gonna crumble. We've only got 17 pound test. One of the eyes is broken. First time using a $37 rod. There's a little cove here. I'm just gonna cast it right in between. Oh no, too far. All right, that'll work. Now let's see if we get any bites. I always use braid. This is the first time I'm using mono from shore. I, don't, I can't even tell you how long it's been, but all right, drag. Let's set it to about 10 pound test. We're just gonna let it sit here. Let it sit. And if my theory is correct, all these fish, they want to get away from this rough water too, so they're going to come into the cove also. I hope, man, I hope. It's windy as heck, man. Oh. Fish on. I got a fish on. Fish on. First cast. What is it? Oh, it's exactly what I wanted too. A nice one. A nice one. Oh, my drag is too loose. And we only got 17 pound test. So I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. It's rubbing on the rocks to let it swing out. Ah. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's a beast. That's a good one. And we're done fishing. We've got breakfast and we've got lunch. Hell yeah. That was literally 30 seconds and we got ourselves a nice perch. I've got the fish bleeding out right here. Not putting it in the water because the water actually makes the fish's gills and blood clot. So keeping it out of the water and letting it drip down in that pool. And we're gonna do this similar style to the fish pancake we did, but this time we're gonna start off with some bacon and we're gonna have some bacon bits in our omelet. I don't have a cutting board, but I do have this plate, which is a really good tool to have. It forms into a small bowl, but you can also use the back as a cutting board. So I'm gonna cut this bacon into small chunks all right we're gonna let that cook on low heat so it gives me some time to fillet that fish now we can't just throw raw fish into our omelet that's gonna be disgusting so we're gonna cook the fish first after we cook the bacon Now check out that filet. See how I got the belly, right? But there's no rib bones because I cut through the pin bones and I left all the rib bones right there. So, didn't puncture any guts. Smells fresh. Now let's skin it. All right, our skin, pretty cool. Man, this is like really wide. If I took two of them on both sides, sewed them together on the bottom, Maybe I can make that into a little bag or something. Wouldn't that be cool to take the scales off first? <laughs> now I'll do the same thing like the bacon. I'll chop this up into small pieces. We're good to go. All right, we'll just let these cook together. We got the bacon and the fish going in. You know, when I first had the surgery, the first two days were really tough. I couldn't move at all. My leg was basically good as nothing. Like I needed, I could have amputated it, you know? And that made me think there's so many people out there who are disabled somehow, they got hurt or just got old and they just can't move anymore. And it made me so sad because I wanted to get out so bad, but I couldn't. So a couple days later, I took the wheelchair out. Oh, man, it's been years since I've been here. I remember coming out here as a kid with my mom and dad, my sister, some friends every once in a while, catching tons of anchovy. 
You smell that smell? Yeah. Smells a little bit like fish, like poop. <laughs> I don't know, man. It smells great to me, man. Oh, by the way, I, I released my first podcast with June More Than Fishing. It's on my second channel. I totally forgot to tell you, but yeah, I went out on the pier with my friend Julian, who's also the co-host of that podcast. If you want to listen to it, uh, I guess I'll put the link in the description. And yeah, it was just, I was just trying to show like, if you're hurt, you could still get out there. It's gonna be a little bit of a struggle, but man, you struggled enough. And it's just like what I was saying at the beginning of the video, I'm so tired of being complacent. You know, now I'm just ready to get out there again. If you're cooking fish like this and you've seen some parasites in it, make sure you cook it well because it's not the parasites itself that you have to worry about, it's the parasite eggs. Oh my gosh, I'm going to show you the ocean in a second. It is nasty out here. And that's the reason I was in the mountains in the first place. Let's get these eggs. Alright, I'll try it like this. <laughs> All right, yeah, that worked. Why not? All right, I'm gonna say that's good. I think that's done. It's hot enough, that's for sure. Did it cook all the way through? Oh yeah, let's flip it over so you can see that side. All right, look at that. Success. This is the ocean right now. It is nasty. I think this turned out really well. It does taste a little bit like seaweed, a little musty but the bacon evens it out. From a failed trip in the Sierra Nevadas down to the coast again. All right, y'all, I don't know what's gonna happen next, what trip I'm gonna do next, but I'm gonna be doing a lot more trips. Yeah, all on the $37 rod too. In two minutes, let's go.